So not too long ago, LG released their G7 ThinQ, continuing their hopes of remaining competitive in the top smartphone class. And yes, the name of this phone really is the G7 ThinQ. Odd name aside, after using this as my primary phone for an extended period of time, I found this to be what could be considered one of the most, if not the most, underrated smartphone of 2018. Of course, the year isn't over yet and there are still more phones to be released, but that's exactly my point. I feel this phone will continue to be overlooked and could end up being a hidden gem. Alright, so no sugarcoating here. The G7 is easily one of the best all-arounders out there. The design isn't jaw-dropping, but it is clean and simplistic, which I like. It's actually kind of a fusion of the G6 and the V30. It's got a smooth glass and metal frame sandwich, which makes for some solid and premium feeling hardware. The phone is comfortable to hold in the hand, and it's nice and lightweight too without feeling cheap. You will find a headphone jack, you'll find expandable storage, wireless charging, water resistance, and you'll also find a button that's actually dedicated to the Google Assistant and not some other proprietary assistant. Flipping the phone around, you'll see an expected dual camera setup and a fingerprint reader, which does not double as a power button anymore like we've seen on previous LG phones. The power button is back on the right side where it belongs. And lastly, on the bottom, we've got a single loudspeaker, which I will talk about a little later. As for the screen, well, you can see it fits in with the latest smartphone display trend. It's also sporting the tallest aspect ratio on an Android smartphone at 19.5 by 9. It is a nice looking bright display, albeit an LCD panel, and it's also quite pixel dense at 564 pixels per inch, which is actually higher than the Galaxy S9 Plus. It's not the best screen out there, but overall it is a good clean display. Now getting into my experience with this phone, the G7 has been a pleasure to use. It's nowhere near perfect or anything, but I haven't noticed any big glaring issues so far. I do have to mention though, the mere 3000 mAh battery in the phone. It does leave a bit to be desired as I don't consistently get over 5 hours of screen on time. I haven't found myself having to constantly plug in to charge or anything, I just felt they could have done better in this department. The Google Assistant button is a nice feature to have, and of course I prefer this over Samsung's Bixby button, and you can even do a double press to activate Google Lens, which is baked right into the phone. Unfortunately, the button isn't remappable, and I figured this should be a standard function because while the button is handy to have, I can just as easily activate the Assistant by long pressing the Software Home button. As we know, LG doesn't have the best track record when it comes to Android skins, but similar to Samsung, years of changes and adjustments have made for a UI that's at least bearable. Performance is smooth with minimal hitches, and things have been working for me as they should. The fingerprint reader is fairly quick and quite accurate. The facial recognition works nicely too, just like the V30. It's got the latest and greatest processor and GPU, along with up to 6GB of RAM. So just know that all of your daily tasks will not be a sweat for this phone at all. As usual, you can expect the software to have its fair share of features and tweaks. Some of you won't use them and some of you might, but the good thing is that you won't feel overwhelmed with features and a lot of these things are pretty useful. All right, now something I wanna give a quick shout out to is this single bottom firing speaker, you little beast you. This is easily the best single bottom facing speaker that I've heard on the phone. Would I have preferred a stereo setup? Absolutely. But the strength and the volume this thing has makes up for it to an extent because it's still really easy to cover up. It can get super loud and maybe to some, a little too loud, but at normal levels it's crisp and clear, you can actually make out the bass and you really need to hear this in person, and it does prove that this boombox resonance chamber LG implemented is 100% legit. Going into my review period, what I was probably most interested in was how well the cameras perform and what kind of results you get. I can say that the results will meet most general users' needs, although if having the best picture quality is at the absolute top of your list, there are other, better options out there. General shots come out looking pretty nice in most conditions, and even low light shots came out much better than I expected. Oh, and you can't forget the wide angle lens, which I absolutely love for when I'm out and about. But I think what I'm most impressed with 
is the front-facing camera. As a lot of you know, previous LG phones were notorious for their poor selfie cameras. Now, with this one, you can get some decent, usable shots, and well, it's about time. As for other features, the portrait mode was underwhelming, the effect looked overdone, and the AI cam, which is supposed to detect what the camera's pointing at and make certain adjustments for the best results, was also pretty underwhelming and just didn't work as well as it should. The saving graces here are LG's awesome manual modes for both photos and especially videos, which are without a doubt some of the best camera smartphone features out there. Overall camera experience is good. I do wish it was a bit snappier, no pun intended, but it's solid. All in all, I think the LG G7 ThinQ is a phone people in the market for a smartphone should have on their radar, especially as time goes on and prices drop. There's a good amount to like about it, mainly because LG actually has a way of differentiating its devices from the rest of the competition with a specific feature set, which may not be totally groundbreaking or anything, but definitely intriguing and worth checking out. A quick search online and you'll find the G7 for less than $600, and if you do some additional digging, you can find them for under $550. And at that price point, I find the G7 ThinQ to be absolutely worth it. So what are your thoughts on the G7 ThinQ? Go ahead and let us know by dropping your comments down below. As always, we love to hear your feedback. But anyway, that does it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to smack that like button. Subscribe to the Android Police channel if you're new. I'll talk to you guys later, and thank you so much for watching.